Hi, my name is Jim Sinesco, Vice President with AFC International, and today I'm going to introduce you to a new product, at least a new product for us, uh, the Micro CO. Now, the Micro CO is the concept and the idea that the Micro CO incorporates is really not a quite that quite of a new idea. In fact, um, it's been around quite a bit. Um, but anyway, what what does the Micro CO do? The Micro CO is a handheld device that has a carbon monoxide sensor in it but it's designed to take your exhaled breath and see how much carbon monoxide is in your exhaled breath. There is a correlation between exhaled carbon monoxide in your breath and the amount of percent of carboxyhemoglobin percentage in your blood. So for years, I mean, when I worked for Drager way back in the day, we had a detector and an instrument that actually could do the same thing. And it's been around for a long, long, long time. But this company, MicroCO, has come up with this newer type of package, easier, simpler to use, more specifically for exhaled breath and uh, carbon monoxide absorption. And I think it's kind of a winner. I think it's a really good idea. I thought it was a great idea back 20, 30 years ago, and I think it's a wonderful idea now, and I really like this package. So today I'm just going to kind of go over the basics of the Micro CO and, uh, and give you an idea of what this can do and what the, how it operates and uh, give you some information on how uh, uh, you can attain one of these. The whole basis of, of carbon monoxide in the breath and carbon monoxide in your blood is based upon the amount of carbon monoxide that's in the ambient air. Um, you know, we have now carbon monoxide gas meters. This is a, a Toxy 3, Toxy Ray 3 from Ray Systems, but there's uh, instruments all over the place. Fire service is using them. Industrial places are using single gas, multi-gas carbon monoxide instruments. Homes also have uh, carbon monoxide detectors, at least a lot of them do. But there's kind of a little bit of a, a, a difference between ambient levels, air in the air, carbon monoxide that's just floating around in a house or in a business, and then the amount of response or absorption that employees or homeowners um, have inside their body. So having the one component, the ambient air connection or concentration, doesn't always necessarily mean that the concentration that's inside the body or uh, in the blood in this case is actually a one for one. Uh, it is true, uh, and studies have proven this, that your exhaled breath, if you were to contain that and measure the amount of carbon monoxide in your exhaled breath, there is a, a direct link and a very good strong linear proportion um, that can be made for the percent of carboxyhemoglobin uh, saturation. So I would argue and say, hey, just having an ambient detector for CO uh, is not just not the only way to go. I think having the other relationship, the actual absorption or the actual effects of that ambient CO levels in a handheld detector that can actually directly test a person who's been exposed would be something very, very interesting, or at least I think more important, right? It's the cause and the effect. We want to see how much of the effect we've had from the release. So anyway, the carbon monoxide breath analyzer basically was born. And like I said, it was, it's was it been years. These things have been out for a long time and uh, originally started for smoking cessation classes where individuals go to a medical clinic so they want to try to stop smoking. So they would show up to the classes they were ever the periodically through the week. And the first thing that the instructor would do or the medical technician would do would be, hey, I want you to, to test your exhale breath. I want you to blow into a device and we want to see what your levels of carbon monoxide are. And then that way we could actually tell if you've been smoking or cheating on the system or whatever, or at least to get a baseline of how much carbon monoxide is in their system on a given day. Today, and where I think it's more appropriate, I mean, it's good for the smoking cessation classes, but for where I think a real good need is, is in the fire and uh, EMS uh, markets. I think it's an excellent way to go ahead and test and check residents or people at a fire or at a scene or even in an industrial workplace to test how much carbon monoxide um, is in their exhaled breath and thus the percent of carboxyhemoglobin saturation. So how this does it work? 
Well, the instrument itself is really simple. It's got a display up here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to do my best. A display up here. It's got an, an, an opening up here, top circle up here, tubing, where we will actually put a mouthpiece connected to it. Go ahead and open that up. Pick it up. We're going to attach a mouthpiece. And then we're actually going to put a little cardboard tube, reusable, not reusable, but a one-time use cardboard mouthpiece so we don't have cross-contamination. And it's a, it's a one, two, three step operation. So I'm going to tell you the how we're going to do this, the steps, and then I'm going to actually do a test because I can't talk when I'm, I'm doing the test of myself. But um, on the front of the unit, you're going to see a switch. This little switch we're going to push in the upward direction. And I'm going to push it up to the first position. And the unit will turn on. The unit will turn on. And then it's going to count down from 20. Once it gets down to zero, the screen will say blow. You won't see that because I'm going to actually be blowing into it. Um, and then I'm just going to blow as long and as hard as I can. You don't have to go really hard force. You just have to just blow. So I'm going to go ahead and back up a little bit. Two, one. It's asking me to blow. I'm done blowing. The meter is actually showing a one. That's the amount of carbon monoxide that's inside my exhaled breath. And then all I have to do to convert that from part per million to car percent carboxyhemoglobin, per percent saturation, is move the button straight up. And once I do that, it should be 0.16. That's the correlation, 1 ppm equals 0.16 percent carboxyhemoglobin. At that point, my test is over. All I have to do to restart the test is slide the switch all the way down to the bottom, take the cardboard mouthpiece off and dispose of it, and then put a new cardboard piece uh, mouthpiece on there and start the test again. Okay, So very, very simple, very, very easy. They do give you a chart in the kit. And that chart will give you uh, an excellent source resource to show what these numbers mean. Uh, 0.16 is equal to one part per million. And two part per million is 0.32. That actually tells you that that's a non-smoker range. Okay, so just because you have a little bit of carbon monoxide in the body, um, that could be normal. It could be amounts from just ambient air. Uh, we're in an industrial park here, so there is a little bit uh, of carbon monoxide. Um, Carbon monoxide is actually produced slightly a little bit. I've been reading some articles on this that it can be produced by the body naturally. Um, but as we start to go up, up the concentration, um, you'll see that the correlation to light smokers and heavy smokers, um, you will see that those numbers are very, very good. So a 20 part per million concentration is equal to 3.20 percent carboxyhemoglobin which would indicate heavy to very very high amount of smoking so very very good now in the case of a first responder or a fire people coming out of a fire with smoke inhalation maybe they're not feeling really well this device could be used for a real quick test to see if those individuals need to either be medically evacuated to a, a hospital um, or not if they're their levels are in the the light smoker range or maybe in this area depending upon your SOPs maybe we don't need to do any kind of uh, other medical treatment again this is kind of going um, hand in hand with any kind of SOP that a, a community or a fire department may have already on the books but it gives them a guidance because bottom line is this we want to make sure everybody's safe but if people don't have to be sent to a medical clinic or a hospital because their levels are in the yellow or green range or you're not very severe, it's better just to leave them there and let just over time, the rest and relaxation, um, let them get rid of that carbon monoxide. If we get higher levels, 
up in these areas where it's really getting serious, life-threatening, then of course we're going to go ahead and transport those people and take them to the hospital and do whatever other things we need to do. Hyperbaric chamber, probably, uh, maybe just more rest relaxation, uh, maybe more oxygen uh, is needed. So these are things that the medical community will then figure out how they want to do it. But again, this is a great tool. The micro CO is a great tool to do basic screening at the scene after the situation has happened or maybe even during. Find out where um, the, the exposed people are, where they are as far as the levels, and then make the necessary uh, steps for um, to, to get rid of it or take care of the issue. So micro CO is a great little unit. Um, the range is zero to 300 part per million. It has a sensitivity of one part per million. Um, it can be used between zero to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're not gonna use this right in a fire. It's gonna be outside the, uh, the, um, the, the scene or the incident. You wanna get out of that hazardous area. Um, it can be uh, used for up to two to five years. That sensor should be last between two and five years. And I guess that's depending, I guess, on usage and what the concentrations are. And the sensor drift is really less than 2% per month. So as the unit is being used, you probably want to go ahead and calibrate it. And we calibrate using regular calibration gas, carbon monoxide. We use 20 part per million carbon monoxide. There is a little hole, a little port, and inside that port is a little button. We'll push that button and it'll put it into the instrument into calibration mode. And then we would calibrate this just like we would uh, a single gas detector or a multi-gas detector. We're going to give it gas standard gas, calibration gas, and we're going to span that sensor up to 20. That way we know when we're using it in the field, it's actually accurate. It runs on a 9-volt battery, and it's fairly lightweight. It's only about uh, six and a half ounces. So it's a very, very small unit. Um, indicator lights are green, yellow, and red to tell you where you are in the, in the uh, test procedure. So it's very, very simple. It does have a wrist strap here, so you can hold on to it, doesn't drop it. And uh, very, very simple setup. In the kit itself, there is a calibration adapter. It comes with a starter pack of mouthpieces. It has a place for the mouthpiece. And that mouthpiece, by the way, has a one-way valve, so we won't contaminate the unit or contaminate the mouthpiece uh, when we're using it. So it's going to be a one-way in valve, so like spit and things like that will be trapped and retained. And a nice gray plastic case. Price point's going to be right around, uh, I think, $995,000. Uh, um, you can give us a call. We'd be more than happy to get you out a quote. But if you want to try one, you want to give it a test run, just give us a call. Uh, anybody here at the office can help you out. It'd be 800-952-3293. Um, and my name's Jim Sinesco. So if you have any questions, need any more help, need to contact us about further information, we would appreciate talking to you. And again, thank you very much for watching. Hope this has been entertaining to you.